بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم اینڈ ویلکم ٹو دس لیکچر آن ورک اینڈ پروسیس ڈیزائن ایز دس کورس از ڈیوائڈیڈ ان ٹو فور ماڈیولس اینڈ وی آر کرنٹلی آن ماڈیول ٹو دیٹ از میتھڈ اسٹڈی اینڈ ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس ہاؤ وی کین ڈیولپ اے بیٹر لے آؤٹ سو ایٹ دا اینڈ آف دس لیکچر یو شوڈ بی ایبل ٹو ڈفرینشیٹ بٹوین ڈفرینٹ پروسیس ٹائپس and then differentiate between different types of layouts. Uh, these two topics are very much interrelated. The type of layout uh, very strongly depends upon the type of process. So uh, we can relate many features of the process with the features of the layouts. So this is a very important relationship. You should be able to understand the characteristics of different types of layouts and we will focus primarily on designing a process layout and once you can understand the features of a process layout you can easily design a product layout and a cellular layout as well so our focus from design perspective will be more on process layout so what is a facility layout it is the arrangement of machines departments, workstations, storage areas, aisles, common areas, etc. within an existing or proposed facility. The basic objective of the layout decision is to ensure a smooth flow of work, material, people and information through the system. So that is the uh, primary goal of designing a layout. So we have to make sure that the flow of of the people, the material and the information is as smooth as possible. There are three basic types of layouts. We are having process layouts, product layouts and fixed position layouts. And there are some other layouts that are variation or a combination of these basic layouts. So we are having cellular layouts, flexible manufacturing systems, and mixed model assembly lines. And this layout, cellular layout, is very important uh, with respect to our course. Apart from these three basic types, this fourth one, the cellular layout is very important. And this is especially very useful layout uh, in lean manufacturing. We will discuss the features of cellular layouts and see uh, why this is a preferred layout uh, and what benefits it offers. Especially uh, once you are focusing on reducing waste in your system, then it is, a, it is a good option in many situations. So you are already familiar with these five types of processes, the project process, jobbing, batch, mass, continuous. We are having high variety uh, in project and jobbing, but low volume. And as we move down, the volume produced in unit time increases. Now these uh, types of processes actually uh, help us decide the type of layout that we are going to use. So project processes use fixed position layout, job shops, and batch. And use functional layout, or in other words, we can say that a job shop can use a functional layout or a cellular layout. And same is uh, true for the batch process. It can use a functional layout or a cellular layout. The mass process or assembly lines, they use either a cellular layout or a product layout. And continuous processes always use product layout. Now we will go into details of uh, these layouts, but from these uh, figures, you can get a basic idea of each type of layout. So you can see that material resources and labor is moving toward the product in the fixed position layout. In the functional layout, we have arranged the uh, machines and equipment uh, together according to the similar functions. 
In cellular layout, you can see that we have made cells and each cell is dedicated to a specific product. And you could notice from uh, this uh, arrow, these two arrows that some processes could be common actually between the cells. And in the product layout, we are having a serial flow of the material. So it starts from one end and uh, exits from the other. So this is a very good summary of different types of uh, layouts and how they relate to different types of processes. So process layouts group similar activities together according to process or function they perform. Product layouts arrange activities in line according to sequence of operations for a particular product or service. And fixed position layouts are used for projects in which product cannot be moved. So labor and resources move toward the product. A brief description of these three basic layouts. So first process layouts, these are also known as functional layouts because similar functions are grouped together. Temples are machine shop and departmental store. Characteristics uh, of uh, service shop, job shops, or batch production. So as I showed you in the figure that uh, job shops and batch product production both uh, use process layouts. These types of layouts are used where we are having customers with different needs. So in the case of manufacturing, we are actually making uh, a same or similar family of products. Uh, but products are very different from each other. So as we discussed the jobbing process in one of the uh, lectures, uh, that uh, uh, a jobbing process actually uh, makes very similar products, uh, uh, products of the same family, but they are very different from each other. The example that we discussed was of tools and dyes. So each die or mold that you are making requires similar machines and processes. Uh, but each dye and mold is very different with respect to size and material, the number of cavities, no, the type of gating system, etc. from the other. The volume of each customer order is low and the sequence of operations is variable. So this is very important. And this is why, the second point, uh, this is why the machines are grouped together according to the function. The equipment is general purpose. Workers are skilled at the equipment in their particular department. And the basic benefit of this type of layout is flexibility. So we can easily switch from one product to the other that is different than the previous. So the equipment and the workforce or the resources in general are flexible. So they, they can perform different types of operations. Disadvantages are inefficiencies, utilization is low, backtracking is a big issue, time spent in department to department movement uh, is huge in general. So a lot of time is uh, spent in transportation and waiting. Different operation setup for particular requirements. So generally change over time is an issue as well. So workers load also fluctuates. So, uh, Sometimes they may be overutilized and in, so, in some other period, they may be underutilized. So example of process layout in service organization is a department store where we are having uh, similar products uh, stored or displayed together. So that is the example of uh, process layout or functional layout in service organizations. And this is the example of a process layout in manufacturing. So we are having lathes grouped together, the milling machines grouped together, the drilling grouped together, the grinding and so on. Now this is the flow of uh, one pro product and the other product may have a uh, slightly different flow and more importantly uh, the second product might be spending different amount of time uh, than the first product. So this is a process layout in manufacturing. 
The storage space is large to accommodate large amount of in-process inventory. So that is important that work in process inventory is large. Finished good inventory is low. And uh, you could see, actually we have discussed it already for which process type uh, it is high. So finished good inventory is low in process layouts and it is high for the product layout. Process layouts in manufacturing firms require flexible material handling equipment, such as forklifts. Process layouts in service firms require large aisle for customers to move back and forth and ample display space to accommodate different customer preferences. So the space required for the movement of customers should be large uh, for process layout in service organizations. And there should be sufficient space for the movement of material handling equipment like forklift trucks in the case of manufacturing organization. The major layout concern of uh, process layout is where to locate the departments or machine uh, centers in relation to each other. And this is something uh, that we will discuss in detail. The product layouts are also known as assembly lines. They arrange activities in line according to the sequence of operations that need to be performed to assemble a particular product. Flow of work is orderly and efficient, suitable for mass production and repetitive operations. Demand is stable, volume is high, and variety is low. So standard product for general market is made using these types of layouts, more automated uh, than the process layouts, and worker perform narrowly defined assembly tasks. So, the labor and equipment is highly specialized. And you could think of example of product layout in service organization as well. So in contrast to process layout, the efficiency is high in product layout. Utilization of labor and equipment is very high. Uh, it is easy to use these uh, uh, types of layouts. The disadvantage is inflexibility. So uh, each line is actually dedicated to specific type of product. So you cannot make a very different product on the same line. Major concern in product layout is balancing the assembly line. The purpose of the line balancing is that no workstation becomes the bottleneck. So the uh, time spent on different workstation is uh, uh, almost identical. So that is the goal of uh, assembly line balancing. The most common material handling equipment for product layout are the conveyors. Aisles are narrow because material uh, moves only one way. So you could remember that aisles were wide in the case of process layout. Workstations are on either side of conveyor. Storage space along assembly line is small. In-process inventory is low and finished good inventory is high. So this is just the opposite to the process layout. So this is an example of a product layout. So this is the material that is uh, moving uh, from say left to right on conveyor. You could see workers on one side of the conveyor and uh, there is a defined pace or speed of the conveyor uh, so that each worker can perform the task uh, that he is required to uh, before the product moves to the next uh, operator. And important thing is to balance the work of different operators. So we are having operator one, operator two, operator three, and so on. So the time required for each operator should match the time required by other operators. So that is a big challenge. So a workstation in any area along the assembly line that requires at least one worker or a one machine. So that is the definition of workstation. So uh, that the time at each workstation should be very similar to the time at other workstations. So that is the goal of line balancing. It is not necessary that the operations are arranged 
uh, in a straight line. It could be something like this as well. So in a way you can say that we can have more than one lines, but basic point is that product enters uh, from one end and exits from the other, and there is no backtracking. So that is the basic uh, crux of a product layout. But generally, uh, we are having layouts like these, the straight line layouts. So we could have arrangement like this once we are having uh, the space limitations. So this is a summary of what we have uh, discussed. Comparison of product and process layouts. So in product layout, we are having sequential arrangement of activities. In process layout, functional grouping of activities. Uh, the product layout is used for continuous processes, mass productions. Process layout is used for inter intermittent production like job shop and batch production. The product in product layout is standardized, make to stock, and uh, we are having high variety products, make to order in process layout. Demand is stable in product layout. It is fluctuating in process layout. Volume is high here, volume is low. In product layout, we require special purpose equipment and general purpose equipment is used in process layout. Workers are having a limited skill, a narrow set of skills in product layout, but the workforce is flexible. It has varied scale in process layout. Product layout in process inventory is low, finished good inventory is high, and it is just the opposite in process layout. Storage space is small uh, along the assembly line in product layout, but it is large on the production floor in the process layout. Material follows a fixed path on a con conveyor in a product layout, but the path is variable in a process layout. Backtracking is also possible. So a lot of transportation takes place here. Aisles are narrow and they are wide in the process layout. Uh, the scheduling is part of the balancing. So you have to balance the line and it is dynamic in the case of process layout. So you have to constantly uh, keep on changing the schedule, adjusting the schedule as the new orders come in. So line balancing is a uh, concern here in product layout. Location of the machine is a major concern in process layout. Equalize the work at each station, that is the line balancing in product layout, and minimizing the material handling cost is a focus in process layout. The basic advantage of product layout is efficiency, high uptime, and the basic advantage of process layout is flexibility. Here you could see example of a process layout. So you could see different machines grouped together, and you could see large, uh, very wide, actually very wide aisles. You could notice a forklift truck that is moving along these aisles uh, that are very wide. And uh, this is the product layout. So product is moving in this direction on a conveyor and we are having workers at each workstation and they are uh, assembling the product. So this was a comparison of product and process layout. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask. The third type of uh, basic layout is fixed position layout. And as we saw in the previous segment that uh, generally the projects use this type of layout. Product is too fragile or too bulky or heavy to move. So the product remains stationary for the entire manufacturing cycle. So that is very important. And equipment, workers, materials, and other resources are brought to the site or, or they move to the product. The classical examples of the products that require fixed position layout are ships and aircrafts. Uh, we need highly skilled labor and generally the wage is high in this type of industry. 
and for the organization the uh, profit margins are high as well equipment utilization is low and typically the fixed cost are also low but the variable costs are high one of the major concerns in in fixed position layout is to complete the project or or the or to finish the project uh, within given uh, time frame that is one of the major concern in, in these types of processes the the projects so time is very important and the second important important constraint is the cost so you have to complete the project within uh, the specified time frame and within the budget constraints and the third constraint is the scope so you will study these in in detail in your course on project management so as the number of resources and number of acti activities are many in this uh, type of process as well so scheduling is also a major issue here just like job shops the scheduling is a major issue so generally different softwares are available that help uh, in scheduling using uh, this type of process so ms project is an example so here is an example of uh, of making a big ship so you could see the product is big it is bulky it is huge so the workers the laborers and equipment are brought to the site where the ship is being built so resources move toward the product that is fixed in the position so building large ships aeroplanes submarines and similarly the construct uh, construction projects all are examples of project process that needs fixed position layout 